Procast rev up this week. We're previewing the big match against the Saints. Saints on a bit of a roll at the moment, Cameron. And yes, you don't need any introduction. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the match is obviously at Marvel Stadium at 4.05 Adelaide time. And uh, before we get into looking at that match, mate, what do you think about the hammering we dished out to the Suns last week? Loved it. Yeah, it was good. Loved it. Yeah, I did. Thought that um, it was a, obviously a bit of a tussle early on, mm. but I thought that we demanded control of the game. Some say that you know Gold Coast may have dropped off. I agree, but disagree. I think that we wrestled control away from them. Don't sit on the fence, mate. You agree or you just disagree? I just said that I think we wrestled control away from them. Obviously, you weren't listening. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm one of those people that think that they made us look good. Mm. I think that they were on the end of a bit of a tear and uh, they kind of hit the wall when they came up against a team that were prepared to work as hard. And admittedly, I think we did well to actually match them in that first quarter and yep. not allow them to skip away to a couple, which we can sometimes do. So, Especially this year. Yeah, so mm. the fact that we were able to, to go with them and make it a contest and then uh, be able to pull away probably just with a bit of class mm-hmm. and um, a little bit more in the tank, but uh, I'm not getting carried away just yet. Look, all aboard the DMAC train as well. Like, <laughs> the start of the year, we absolutely tore shreds off the bloke, and I think that's the best game I've ever seen him play. And if he does that week in, week out... 2009 form, that if, was. If he does that week in, week out, I may be a big fanboy by the end of the year. Well, put it this way, uh, for one of the few times in David's career, and all due respect to David because he's a lovely bloke, he's probably not one of the first that you'd say to be dropped from this team at the moment. I think he probably was in the best players. Yeah, no, be that, and, yeah, yeah, that's right. And that's a fair call. So, I mean, look, and uh, that's all we ask mm. from all the players. But every uh, week, D-Mac, and I'll love you, I promise. I mean, D-Mac gets smashed, because, and he's probably an easy target. Yeah. But when he just showed us how much value he is when he can get on the end of um, a, a run and, and have ball in hand going into forward 50. Yep. Because his delivery is first class. Yep. Well, it can be. Well, in those circumstances. Mm-hmm. Yep. When he's got time and space to be able to deliver, he'll, he'll hit someone on the chest yep. every time. Which he did. It, it's David struggles when it, he's under pressure because mm. he's so light. And, you know, yep. But anyway... Um, yeah, so overall, look, it was healthy percentage-wise. It got us up to about 108%, which is good. So yep. it means that we're not behind the eight ball in that regard. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, those sort of games can sometimes, I think, work a few plays into form, irrespective of whether the opposition's mm-hmm. putting up good, uh, you know, good opposition or not. Mm-hmm. Um, and I liked what I saw of Tex. Oh, yeah. Um, D-Mac, you already mentioned. Yep. Uh, Alex Keith played another good game, I thought. Yep. Um, uh, Brody Smith, yeah, uh, really, really good. started to show us what he can do. Yep. Um, Hughie in that transition, Hugh Greenwood was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, had this discussion on Tuesday night. Cam Ellis Yolman, best twenty-two. I'm just calling it. He's, yeah, uh, I've been a fan of Cam Ellis Yolman's since he joined our squad, and I think he's been hard done by because he's not he's not the typical Adelaide Crows player. Yeah. There are other players like him in the comp, but he's not the type of player we would normally go for. He's a big-bodied midfielder. He's not terribly fast, although he's not as slow as what people say. No. He's not silky by foot in terms of his action, but he's actually quite effective. And when you look at the stats, he's actually his disposal efficiency is better than what people give him credit for. Oh, not just what he give him credit for, but people actually say that he's fumbly and he's got poor disposal. It's actually incorrect. Yeah. He only had, I think it was five turnovers on the weekend. And for an inside midfielder that plays his position, yeah. is quite low. And his efficiency was like up around the 75%. Mark. Yeah, exactly. So what else do you want from him? Like, to give you an example, everyone loves Huey Greenwood. Huey, Green, Huey Greenwood's disposal efficiency on the weekend was like 55% or yeah. something. And that's playing a 50% forward. So, so yeah, everyone needs... And I agree with you, Cam ellis And I was a bit on the fence about him, I have to admit. But last year, he really showed me that he is up to the level. Well, the thing I like about Cam is that he runs in straight lines. Yeah. So he never deviates. So even in traffic, he doesn't deviate. But he also doesn't go to ground. He keeps his feet yep. in those, in tight. Mm-hmm. So he's always got the ability to stay on, on top of the ground and, and to dish. Yep. And his hands are actually pretty good in tight. So um, I'm glad that uh, he's uh, had a chance and I hope he makes the most of it. Yep.
So let's get into the team selections, and why don't we start off with St Kilda, mate? No worries. So starting from the back line, at the back pocket we have Jimmy Webster. Lining up at fullback is Nathan Brown. In the other back pocket we have Shane Savage. Half back line we have Callum Wilkie, the North Adelaide boy. Yeah. Yeah. Been um, come up from rookie draft or whatever it was. The anyway the yeah. rookie draft. Yeah, but it was the injury one. You know how when you get oh too yeah, yeah that's was, right the he was um, Jake, Jake Carlisle's replacement. Yep. Um, and been in the team ever since. Josh Battle at centre half back. Uh, Daniel McKenzie comes in for Geary, which is a big out for them. Um, lining up across the wing, we have Jack Stephen. Seb Ross is in the middle. Yep. And then we've got Jack Nunes, who is in some pretty good form on the other wing. Half forward line, we've got Billings. Jack Billings, that is. Ha- uh, centre half forward, Josh Bruce. Uh, other half forward flank, we have Matthew Parker, the young fella. And then full forward line, we have Jack Lonnie in the pocket. Tim Membry at full forward and Jade Gresham at the other pocket. Uh, Ruckman, Rowan Marshall. Uh, and then you've got the Ruck Rover is Steel and the Rover is Sinclair. Interchange, we have Blake Akers, Ben Long, Dean Kent, and Ben Patton. Very good. For the Crows, uh, only the one change, with Miller obviously coming out with that AC and Miles Baholke getting another go. Um, from the fullback line, we have Alex Keith, uh, Daniel Talia at fullback, and Laity in the other pocket. Uh, across half back, we have the reborn David McKay. Uh, big yes. bad. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to use that. Big bad Kyle Hardigan at centre half back. Mm. And the evergreen Jake Kelly. I actually thought he was all right on the wing. Yeah. Nah, Jake I Kelly. thought he was good on the wing. Yeah. Uh, across the middle, uh, Riley Knight, named on a wing. Mm. Hugh Greenwood in the middle. Yep. And Atkins on the other wing. That's actually an interesting and unconventional. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Midfield line for the Crows. Yeah. Haven't seen that too often. No. Half forward, we have Bradley Crouch, uh, Tex Walker, and uh, the Chief, Tommy Lynch. The Chief! Had an almost game last week, Chief. Got tons of it and just kept giving it back. Oh, just give it back. Was everywhere, actually. Yeah, especially early. And then he'd just kick one off his knee and <laughs> yeah. lace out someone on the other team. <laughs> full, uh, full forward line, we have Lockie Murphy, who took that magnificent mark. Which one? Uh, he took two. Week. Yeah, well, the one running back was... There was two. Yeah. It was... All right, was all right, two. all right. There was two, no. Uh, the Berg, Big Easy, gets yep. another crack. I yep. thought it, I liked what I saw last week. Yep, made us look better too. And Eddie Betts, who uh, needs to back up in a non-tattoo bet game uh, after... Uh, Have you been uh, sitting that on all week? <laughs> no. A non-tattoo bet. Well, oh. I mean, he, he's been Is nowhere, and all of a sudden he bet? bobs up with six just because his well, brother-in-law is going to well, get a tattoo. Who called it as well, by the way. Yeah, he did. Thanks. So uh, put that in there. Rucking. Riley O'Brien, big chance this week for Riley against uh, a lesser known mm-hmm. we'll Ruckman. We yeah. will. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cam Ellis Yeoman, we've already mentioned, and Sloaney uh, roving as well. On the bench, we're starting with Crouchy. Bryce Gibbs. Now, uh, you uh, mentioned that uh, Gibbsy hasn't actually made the flight. So, no. given that people will be watching this on Saturday at lunchtime, we're recording this Friday evening, mm. and... Gibbsy wasn't on the plane. Yes. So Gastro, they're saying. Yeah, so probably unlikely. So uh, a late change and uh, Pikey reckons it's out of Chase and Darcy, uh, Chase and Gallucci. Correct, yeah. Yeah, so by the time you're watching this, you may already know what that uh, selection is, but as it stands at the moment, it looks like one of those two will come in for Bryce Gibbs. What about Paholke and Smith on the bench, mate? You missed them. What are they not in the team? That's what I thought. (laughs) (laughs) So, mate, looking at the lineups, who do you reckon are the key players for the Saints this week? Yeah, look, I actually watched the St Kilda Melbourne game last week. Well, that's fucking helpful, isn't it? It is. It is. So I actually know a bit about the team. This is why I'm doing them this week. Yeah. Um, and big bad Tim Membry had mm. a bit of a game. And yeah. it was very apparent just by watching one game that he's very important to their structures. Yeah. Um, I feel like he gets out the back a lot like what old JJ used to do yeah. um, back in the day. 
Um, but difference is memory can stand under it and take a grab. Yeah. So if memory has a day out, it'll go a long way for them. Uh, the other one as well is the hard man flowing along locks with a bit of an undercut action. Yeah. It's Jack Stephen. Oh, Don't know about that. Oh, a big fan. He's big a big fan. unit too. Well, he's not very tall, but he's as wide as he is tall. He's like a big square running around. But again, a bit of a barometer for them. Yeah. When he's up and about, their midfield is flying. Yeah. Um, and again, I really rate that haircut. I really do. Not a fan. Nah, it's amazing. Not a fan. It, if I wasn't in a profession where I needed to be <laughs> as clean cut as what I am, and I know that's not very clean <laughs> cut, there would be all sorts of Jack Stephen on my head. Absolutely. Yeah, well, don't lose your job. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, maybe I'll just get the hair cut. <laughs> yeah. um, and then the other one for me is, well, down back, Shane Savage is going to have a big role to play, especially with Geary out. Mm. Geary was pretty pivotal for their ball movement this year. Yeah. And obviously, you know, um, conducting the troops down there as well, being the skipper. So yeah. I think Shane Savage back there being... One, a bit of an older head, um, especially with a few of the younger ones I've got around and unexperienced ones I've got around, but then also for their ball movement, kicking out, directing traffic, all that sort of stuff, he's going to be important for them as well. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, look, um, for the Crows, uh, it's interesting because I, it's an interesting lineup the way they've been put on there on mm. paper, and, you know, who knows how they're going to line up. But mm. I think the key players for us are definitely Kyle Harding and down back. Mm needs to have a game because he's going to have to play small um, based on how they're... Um, I, I would imagine that we're going to have... We'll probably line up Hardigan on um, uh, Bruce, yeah, be Bruce first up. Mm-hmm. But I think Hardigan's actually going to have to spend a lot of time on a, on a mid-size as well. Yeah, well, Parker is their other one and then you've also got Blake Akers on the bench that goes down there. And Blake Akers is a big body as well. Yeah. Um, but he's not overly tall. So, yeah, yeah you're 100% right on there. Yeah. Uh, so, and Kyle's been sadly out of touch. Mm, a big, thought... big fan, big fan of Kyle, but um, he needs to have a job. And I think he might have a, a bit of a task this week. And Look, he needs to stand up. He wasn't horrible last week either. He wasn't horrible, no. But he's also a lot better than what he's playing, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. He's, it, like, season form to date hasn't been up to scratch mm, for agree. him. So, he needs to come out. Yep. Um, Midfield, the midfield battle is going to be interesting. Uh, mm. they, they're a bit like Gold Coast in that they just work hard. Well, they're actually a better clearance team than what we are yeah. at the moment, and stoppages as well. So, yeah. and not only that, their their defensive spread against um, uh, Melbourne and their their ability to make space and position on transition, mm-hmm. they just kept bouncing it out of bloody half back yeah, slingshot ball. Yep. yep. And they and I think Melbourne were playing pretty slack, and the question's got to be yeah. asked about Melbourne. Oh but, yeah, there was a lot of coverage on how lack lackluster their work rate was. But yeah. anyway, but, no, but nonetheless, St Kilda showed that that they work hard, they work hard in transition, mm-hmm. and so it's another challenge for our midfield. And I think one of the keys is actually Matt Crouch in that because Matt isn't one to do a heck of a lot of defensive running. Um, well, he does, but he's often trailing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A defensive gasping. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So he hasn't looked 100% fit. He's mm-hmm. looked a little bit behind the eight ball in yep. terms of his fitness. Yep. Um, and a bit's going to be asked of him this week, I think, um, when he's when he's running through the midfield. Um, so uh, it's going to be very important that Matt Crouch in particular, but also Huey and Cam ellis Yeoman and Bradley and all of them, mm-hmm. um, are prepared to run both ways. Because if they're not, St Kilda will do exactly what they did to Melbourne. And uh, just get out the back of us and just just run the ball in easy. Mm. Yeah, well, that's what they do. Yeah, and up forward, I think uh, Tex is on the verge, mm. and he doesn't mind Marvel or oh, Docklands yeah. or whoever the hell Whatever it is his this, name week. this week. Yeah. yeah, doesn't mind a bit of the indoor stadium, mm. and he he looked good on the lead. He looked good coming out of the goal square. How good did he look coming out of the goal square? Yeah. Yeah, oh, it been was back, praying for it. Been it was, it was like when we um, had him and Tippett in the same forward line where they used to yeah. switch between centre yeah. forward, full forward. He looked yeah. great with all that space. Well, and I reckon that's what they've been trying to do with JJ. But JJ, I don't think, has the the the, the natural football awareness. Yeah, he doesn't have good leading patterns. No. Yeah. And one thing that Peter Jay on our Tuesday night show mentioned, uh, he, he's a bit of a Himmelberg fan, was how good Elliot's tank was and mm. how he was able to to lead out and not not just to lead out for the ball but as you know to, to create space behind him yep. and Tex loved it oh yeah absolutely like, he loved thrived. it yep. and so I, I reckon uh, Tex is a really important player for us mm-hmm. uh, this week to be able to get on the end of the chain there's going to be some fast transition you'd imagine yep um, yeah it's going to be it's going to be a real slingshot affair I think so yeah 
bit of a shootout, I think. Yeah, because we certainly played that way against Gold Coast mm-hmm. last week. So, yeah, and so uh, did St Kilda against Yeah, Melbourne. exactly. So they're my, they're my three uh, key players. So let's look at how we uh, match up this week, mate, because uh, it's an interesting matchup on paper. Um, We've, again, gone in quite tall Mm. down back. Uh, We've persisted with Keith, Talia, Hardigan as the three bigger players, although Keith, he's been playing that day role. And Mm -hmm. we've got Jake Kelly and then the two two runners sort Mm. of thing. So, And um, last week, I know we we played... um, uh, Brody further up, more more wing than half back. Mm, yeah, which I loved, by the way. Yeah, I did, but I just wonder whether we're going to have to have to play a runner a little deeper on the faster deck. So, but anyway, uh, and their forward line is pretty nippy. Yeah, well, even their tools are mobile, um, and like I mentioned before, Matthew Parker, who's a younger lad, is quite mobile. Yep. He's sort of a, a medium height, but is quite athletic and skillful. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna struggle to keep up with that forward line. I think. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think, um, you know, we may end up going Talia on Bruce. I know we talked before about Kyle going on Bruce, but it may end up being Talia on Bruce. Yeah, well, it depends because Membry is like we've said already, pretty pretty mobile and agile. But even like um, you might find that Tiles is on the, like a Blake Acres because Blake Acres isn't very quick, but he's big. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the matchups for their forward line opposed to our defence it's going to be interesting for sure yeah and you know blokes like Loney and Gresham and that they, they can bob up so well Billings and Gresham were pretty good last week yeah um, Billings especially was really good he seems to be finding his feet um, so yeah definitely yep um, so you know I I think the key is again like we were saying before that their ability for uh, to run defensively through our midfield, and I think it's a really interesting matchup because we've got, as you mentioned, a very tough clearance team mm-hmm. who are prepared to work and run mm-hmm. against a team that is similarly good or prides itself as being good in the trenches. Yep, with a lot of inside players. We've got Greenwood, we've got Ellis Yeoman, we've got the Crouch Boys, we've got yep. Sloney, who's an in-out sort of player. Yep. we've brought in Miles Baholke. Yep. So it seems to me that. Um, we're looking very much at having a midfield group that can get their own ball. Yeah, well, you look at the stats, and another stat that St Kilda beat us in is contested ball, which is a little bit concerning because you sort of think, oh, you look at our midfields on paper and you don't look at their midfield and go, wow, look at all those balls yeah. in there. Um, so that might be the reason why the inclusion of Paholke happened when on paper you sort of go, well, that's not really a like for like for Miller. Mm. Um, but yeah, the midfield battle is definitely going to be interesting because when you look at St Kilda, they don't have a whole heap of outside run and a whole heap of silky ball users, but there's a lot of grunt in there and their contested possessions and their clearances and their stoppage work in, their, in terms of their statistics yeah. is pretty evident that's how they play. And they took it to a team last week in Melbourne who play exactly the same way and they pants them. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know the stats on this and you might, mm-hmm. um, but St Kilda strike me as a team who moved the ball by foot more than by hand. Yeah. Typically, but it's not not a massive outlier either. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I think maybe the way that we've set up our midfield is indicative of how we're going to play. Mm. It, it seems to me that we feel like it's going to be a bit of a war inside. Yeah. Well, when you've got Greenwood, Ellis Shulman, and Rory Sloan lining up in the guts for the first bounce, yeah, like that's all your your in and under go kill people midfielders. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's some pretty big bodies in there that's going to go pretty hard on that first bounce, I think. Yeah, that's right. So we could see a, a, um, a tight contest in close and then both teams trying to get the ball get it out. to the outriders, yep. um, which is where blokes like, you know, obviously Smithers and Atkins, etc., are going to be really important yep. for us. Um, up forward, I think they're going to struggle holding us up forward, to yeah. be honest with you. I don't think they actually match up terribly well yeah, with well, our forward line. Well, it's interesting because you, you look at... Nathan Brown. Nathan Brown is a big lumbering guy. You wonder who he's going to take because most of our forwards are pretty mobile. And yeah. even Lynchy, who is not quick, gets around the ground. I don't think Nathan Brown's got the tank for that. No, I reckon Brown will probably start on Himmelberg, I reckon. Yeah, but he's not tall enough for Himmelberg. He's not really, no. Because he's not overly 
tall Nathan Brown. He's big. Yeah, like, yeah. He's a big body. He's a bit like Hardigan in that respect. Yeah. But he's nowhere near as athletic as what yeah. Hardigan is. So yeah. I think he's going to really struggle to find himself a matchup. And then you sort of look at the other tools that they've got in Wilkie and Battle, and Wilkie's sort of like a medium tool. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you just wonder who's going to go where. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, the, the Eddie Betts debate, who's going to take Eddie? Because you don't look at that back line and go, hey, there's a key matchup right there for Eddie. That's right. Well, and not only that, the, I mean, the the amount of times they were able to bounce out of their defence last week, mm. um, Melbourne didn't have the, the same quality of small forwards. Uh, defensive forwards well, they don't have a forward line in general exactly yeah. and so all of a sudden they're up against a, a guy like Lockie Murphy who fought really hard had a bit uh, of a breakout game I thought Murph just in terms of just, output just worked worked hard worked his ass off all, all day you know? like you said on and the it cast. wasn't working for him early no nah, like you said on the cast he just showed that he wanted to be there yeah, yeah. I agree with that yeah I think so too it was a really well put in yeah. that respect and Eddie, uh, you know, got off the chain. Mm. Um, and again, I don't see an obvious matchup. No, I don't either. I think they might have to pull someone uh, off their bench to and give them a job. Yeah. And not a normal defender. Yeah, or sacrifice a bit of their run. Mm. You know, and in that respect, it's gonna. It's what I'm sort of getting at is going to inhibit them either way because either they save face and they put one of their more experienced heads on him to lock him down. Or they just put whoever's on him on him and yeah. just hope that you know their team defense will win rather than having a key matchup that beats him one on one. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I did notice uh, in the in the bit of footage that I watched of the St Kilda game last week is that they were quite happy for the ball to get quite deep in their defense. Yeah, they didn't care. Um, and obviously, part of the reason for that is because uh, apart from Proust, Melbourne didn't really have any threat. Yeah. There, but if they let the ball get that deep into our forward line, I think they're going to have a far bigger time or harder time trying to get that transition going. Well, the key in this respect is that, you're right, St Kilda will be willing to give up that ground, but what it means is they're going to push a lot of numbers back. Mm. So there's going to be times where in our own half, there's un- there's going to be almost every single St Kilda player, yeah. which means in our forward 50, there's not going to be a lot of space. So quick ball, ball movement is going to be key. But then also, if it does hit the deck, it's going to be up to us for small forwards, sorry, to make sure that they keep it in there. Yeah. So lots of tackling pressure, lots of pressure acts in general. Yeah. On the ball coming out, if it does get out, yeah. is going to be pivotal. Well, and that's why we were talking about the the Gibbs situation earlier, and that's yep. I know we I, on, on on face value, I'd probably lean to Galucci coming in for Gibbs, mm. but I have a sneaking suspicion because of that need for some defensive pressure. We'll get a um, chase here. We'll, we'll give it a, and. As we were talking about before we started recording, yep. the kid hasn't done anything wrong. No, he, hasn't. he just banged his head. Yeah. So, um, you know, both of them probably deserve a crack. Jordan's been playing pretty decent footy in the twos. Yep. And Chase didn't put a foot wrong when he was in, in no. before he got uh, the concussion. Thing, the only thing you'd want from Chase is kick a goal, son. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, to kick a goal, that'd be nice. You deserve it. Yeah, just get on the scoreboard. <laughs> yeah, can you? Hit the board, and I hope when he does it, we all get around him. <laughs> yeah. I hope they mob him. <laughs> So, yeah, who knows? By the time this goes to air, we'll know, I guess. But yeah. uh, um, I I think Chase will probably come in yep. um, to add a bit of uh, defensive pressure. So, you know, it. I, I think it's, apart from being a battle in the midfield, which I think we're equipped to win, mm-hmm. I think that the, the answer is going to be whether we can have enough effective forward 50 entries yep. and make the most of our opportunities when we do yep. go forward in order to kick a winning score. Yeah, I agree. And like we sort of said, it's going to be a bit of a shootout. They sort of play the same as we do, funnily enough. I don't know where that came from because they never used to. But they push numbers behind and then they slingshot the ball out. They try and get out the back or they'll try and spot up. Um, but really, I think that we've got more class. We use the yep. ball a bit better because I noticed that the skills were pretty scrappy in their game last week. Yeah. Um, so if our skills are on and we get the ball to the outside after winning the contest, we will absolutely run over the top of them, 100%. All right, mate, so you're in the coach's box Mm -hmm. and you're Alan Richardson, Mm. or maybe Brett Ratner, who's coaching the Saints at the moment. I don't know, it looks like a Brett Ratner (laughs) midfield to me. But anyway... (laughs) Uh, so you're, you're head coach of the Saints. How are you going to win this week? Yeah, well, like we sort of already touched on, obviously the slingshot footy from halfback is going to be pivotal for the Saints. 
I think that if they can congest our forward line and sort of nullify the effect our forwards are going to have on the game, that'll be the first step. The next step is them exiting our forward line. So if they don't move the ball quickly and if they allow our small forwards to get into the game with tackling or crumbing or whatever it may be, they'll get mauled. Whereas if they can get it out quickly and get to their you know, midfield like your Stevens, your Nunes, even Savage coming out as well, yep. get the ball up the ground quickly, yep. it'll go a long way. And then it's just up to Membry and Bruce to kick the goals. You've got Billings at their feet. You've got Parker who gets up the ground as a high half forward as well. If they can get the ball quickly to them, create their one-on-ones and get over the back, It's that's gonna what, basically is what's going to win them the game. Yeah, fair call. Yeah. So if I'm Donny Pike, I'm just going to basically say, well, the players just need to play the system better and I'll back them in. <laughs> no, really though. I, you touch on a fucking. <laughs> you, you touch on a couple of key elements there. Yeah. Um, I think for the Crows to win, uh, the first thing we need to do is slow St Kilda's transition down. Mm. So if we allow them enough quick ball movement into an open forward fifty, I think we're going to struggle. Yep. So we need to be able to slow them down on transition and make sure we get. Um, def- set defensively to be able to counter their their forward uh, movement. Yep. If we don't work hard enough and we allow them to get that overlap, I think it's going to be a long day for the Crows. Yep. Um, and the second thing too, I think on the on the over side on the flip side of that is that I think we have to concentrate on moving the ball a bit quicker mm. than we did against Gold Coast. Mm, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Uh, look, I like the way we move the ball against mm. Gold Coast. Now, don't get me wrong, but I think in order to take advantage of um, the form of Tex uh, and the presence of Himmelberg and, and Betts down there, we want that forward line to be as open as possible. Yeah. And as you mentioned before, St Kilda will get back, yep. they'll get behind the ball and they'll try to bounce out. So we need to be able to get that transition going. I'd like to see our kick-to-handball ratio really favour the kick. Yep. Um, I don't mind using the handball to get out of congestion, yep. but I'd like to see it smooth the ball by foot as much as possible. Sometimes we get a little bit handball happy, yeah, and it actually bogs us down because it we can. Yeah. we tend to go that one handball too, too much. Yeah, I don't mind using the handball to get out of trouble, but you're right, handball out of trouble, handball out of trouble, get it on the boot. Yeah, um, and you're 100 percent right that we've got to get it through quickly in order for us to take advantage of the matchups we've got down there. But I also think it's pretty vital that the midfielders press and don't let it out easily as well. So it's obviously it's going to be up to Eddie and Murph and if Chase plays as well, yeah. them to tackle and put pressure on on the way out. Yeah. But it's also up to the mids to make sure they're pushing up and that press is in place so that when the ball does come out, it's coming to us yeah. or at least it's coming to a 50-50 and we can knock it out of play. Well, you're right because what happens if, if they force a turnover in our, in our forward 50 yeah. and, and get that transition going, if we can force a turnover... Yeah. by being well set defensively yeah. and get a repeat inside 50. I watched last week, they just run. Yeah. So they're all out of position. Yep. If we can force that turnover on that on that sort of that part, midfield part of it yep. across the wing um, and get the ball coming back uh, yep. a second time, that that's when the forward line's going to be, yeah, gonna be opening up. And that's pure Crows brand footy as yeah. well. When we're doing that and we're getting repeat entries and we're winning that territory battle, as Pike calls it, yeah. Um, that's when we're on because that's when everyone's trying, pressure's high, ball's not coming out very well for them and then we're getting the ball back in easily. Yeah. Now, I know it might be hard for people to tell uh, because of our video editing skills, but we actually work to a green screen. Yeah. And I'm just... <laughs> if that can looks weird... <laughs> I'm so sorry. Like, it's his fault because he bought the beers this week. <laughs> Just floating black bands. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm not so just I'm not, uh, <laughs> pretending to drink beer. <laughs> oh, I just had to put that in. Yeah, fair enough too. So look, you know, I guess to to round out uh, the show, and I, I'm keen. I, you know, it's bad oh, yeah. because pre-game, well, so pre pre-cast, you've been all doom and gloom. Well, I had let to, me like, pick let, you up a bit. Let me let me <laughs> let me finish. Oh, sorry. I'm keen because as bad as we've been playing up until last week, mm. we have the opportunity to even the ledger. We've got good percentage. Mm. Um, so a win really gets us back into the thick of things. Well, makes us three and three. Exactly. Yep. Um, and I think this this round is where things start to even out a little bit. Yeah. 
you, you stop getting those weird results that we've been getting the first couple of rounds. Well, it's not that we stop getting them, it's just we stop not expecting them. Yeah, that's that right. Sense, yeah, you, you, the form line is there. Yeah, it's yeah. starting to be there. Yeah. We understand now that, you know, Gold Coast are, are, are good, but up and coming. Brisbane, probably good, but up and coming. Yep. Melbourne down and out. Melbourne are cactus. Yep. Uh, Carlton aren't as bad as what people think they are. Yep. Uh, Hawthorne are on the wane. Yep. Geelong have still managed to conjure up a team. Mm. Oh, me and you don't agree on that. They yeah. haven't yeah. managed, but anyway, whatever. Anyway. It's not the Geelong show. Oh. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a, this week is an opportunity to see, I think, where we're really at. Mm-hmm. We're playing a team that's in, been in good nick. Yep. Uh, they seem well organised. They seem like they're playing for the coach and playing for each other. Mm. Um, you know, they're, they're uh, engaged in what they're doing. There's yeah, they, not a lot of slackness going well, on. Well, it's not just that, but there seems to be buy-in, and that's the main yeah. thing. I guess that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. So we, we get to test ourselves, I, I think, against a genuine opponent this 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 week mm-hmm. my biggest fear is what the crows always do what's that have a good win and get pretty darn happy with ourselves uh yes come no. on no but see i don't think there is going to be many people getting darn happy with themselves beating gold coast to be honest i think they'll no, be happy happened before yeah but i think that where we're at this year i don't think that'll satisfy anyone because at the end of the day we're still two and three or whatever it is mm. so i've and I get what you're saying because that has been a, a thing that we do in the past, but that was also when we we're at the top of the ladder. We're not at the top of the ladder right now. Yeah, you know what? Though? I, all right, that's that's my biggest fear. Mm. That I, I have a feeling we're going to start slow. I have a feeling we're going. We've got a. We'll have a little bit of a hangover from having a really good win last week. Mm. I th- I don't think our intensity will be there, mm. and I think we'll be on the back foot for a lot of this game. Yep, and. Uh, as a consequence, I'm concerned to the point that I'm tipping against the Crows this week. Even though, on paper, we should win this game, I think we're not right here. And I think we'll go down by three. It's a good thing you've got no idea what you're talking about because <laughs> there is no Fair way... idea. There, no, you don't because there's no way we lose this game. No way. There is no way we lose this game. No way. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of how well, much. We have four injuries. We'll still win. Still win. We'll still win. With 16. That, that they Their form line flatters them, for one. They're, no, not, they're, not, on. they're not as good as what everyone is making them out to be. They're bloody favourites, betting odds. Mm. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Well, you say that, but bookies aren't prone to giving money away. I know, that's why it's and the most they, ridiculous and thing I've ever they seen. They analyse games and stats and form very closely to set odds. And if a bookie wants to make St Kilda favourite, there's a reason for that. Because he's obviously because... got no idea what he's talking about. No, but it's across the board. So um, you haven't you haven't got any bookie, you know, giving two fifty on on St Kilda. It, the bookie doesn't want money on St Kilda at the moment. I get that, but it's still the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Oh. And I'll tell you why. Mm. It's because their form line flatters them. They haven't beaten us in five years. Doesn't matter. Yeah, it does. They haven't it, beaten us in it's five. It's a different years. team. No, a lot of these guys haven't beaten Adelaide yet. Not one of them. That's all right. No, it's not. It's a massive mental hurdle, and it's what we talked about last week with Gold mm. Coast. Mm. They've never beaten us, period. Yeah. And that was obviously evident with them. You, because no, no, no. Certain... Yeah, that's, that's, you're making a correlation under, of, with, no, with no substance. Well, hang there. on. You told us... That they just lost. You told us that they gave up after quarter time. Yeah, but that's because... not because of a win-loss ratio. That's because they were tired. No, it's a mental hurdle, 100%. No. It is a mental no. hurdle. The fact they haven't beaten us in five years is a big thing. And not just not beaten us, but they haven't beaten us... Uh, sorry, we haven't beaten them less than 50, 46 points in the last uh, five years. 40 odd points. Yeah. yeah. It's an amazing stat, really, isn't it? But I can't wait for us to beat them. I don't, I don't think that... Because you've lost it. <laughs> you've lost it. <laughs> Look, I don't, I don't rate St Kilda as a top four team. At, on, on form, I don't rate us a, as a top four team at the moment. So on current form, on available form, I think there's enough question marks to be able to go with a home side that's playing well. And the, you can't, you cannot argue the fact that Adelaide have a have a history, have a long history of two things: getting ahead of themselves and wilting under real pressure. Yeah, but they don't give you real pressure. They didn't put real pressure on Melbourne. Melbourne were just horrible. How how's their contested ball stats? It's good, but it's not amazing. 
But it's good enough. There's yeah, going to be pressure. It's not going to be any more than what we got last week against Gold Coast. You've got to remember, they only beat Gold Coast by a point. A yeah, but that's when... that aren't there. No, I'm not. But then Gold Coast were playing all right. And then my, my premise is that Gold Coast have, have since tailed off because they're a bunch of kids. So um, I don't see the same with St Kilda. I do. I just oh. don't think they're as good as what everyone says they are. And I think that we found our mojo a little bit. I'm not getting ahead of myself because I understand we beat Gold Coast at home who haven't beaten us before. A bunch of kids. I get all that. And I think that, you know, maybe the scoreline flattered us a little bit. Mm. But I still think the main thing to take from that game was that we sort of found our game style again. Yeah, but do you reckon we're going to get the red carpet rolled out down the corridor like Gold Coast? Like Gold Coast basically formed a, a guard of honour and let David McKay run through the middle rep- and Brody Smith run through the middle repeatedly. Do you think St Kilda are going to allow that? Well, hang on. We just talked about the fact that they, we don't know how we're going to line up down back. Who's going to stop them from doing that? Well, they're midfield. Incorrect. Sorry. Then they're not going to give away them. They're not going to give away them the the corridor like Gold Coast. Yeah, did. but the reason why we had the corridor is because we moved the ball quickly, and that's my point. We moved the ball quickly. Our game style is back to where well, not back to where it was, but it's finding itself again. Moving the ball quickly through David McKay, Brody Smith, Miller last week, but obviously this week. I think that if we do what we did last week again this week, mm. it might not be a bit of a blowout after three. Uh, Sorry, quarter time like it was last mm. week. Mm. But it'll go a long way for us to win. And I genuinely think we'll win by more than six goals. Yeah, okay. Well, last week, the reason why Gold Coast lost by as much as they did is they stopped working. Because one of the strengths of their first month was that they were a very hard-working team. Because they dropped their heads because we worked harder. Ir- irrespective of the, of, the, of the reason, that's what happened. If St Kilda don't drop their heads, and if St Kilda do continue to work, it's going to be far harder for us to be able to move the ball as smoothly. And what tends to happen when Adelaide don't have the game on their own terms is that they start chipping the ball around. They start their transition and their ball movement becomes stagnant. Our forward line becomes congested. We stop moving. That's what I can see happening if we don't get on top of St Kilda in terms of that, that fast ball movement. That's a massive if, because you're basically banking on the fact that we'll go backwards and St Kilda no, will no, carry no. on. No, no, no. Well, I'm banking on the on exposed form of St Kilda, which is that they are a hard-working, two-way running team. And Gold Coast, after quarter time last week, did not run both ways. And that was the reason why we were able to get so much open space. No, they, St Kilda aren't going to allow that. If you watch that game again, it wasn't just like Gold Coast oh, stopped playing the game. Watch it again. Yeah, because we were better and you know to prove my point. <laughs> They didn't just stop all of a sudden. It was a gradual effect. And we slowly got on top. We slowly wound them down. We wound them down to the point where we crushed their spirit and that's when they gave up. Mm. It wasn't just like they didn't come out after quarter time. No, I don't know. And and we're going to get a similar thing here. If we can come out with the same intensity and maybe we have a little bit of a hangover from last week, I don't think it'll matter. Mm. But if we come out with a similar intensity and we move the ball the way we did last week, we will run over the top of them. They might put up a fight for a quarter or two, maybe even three quarters. But it'll get to a point where we'll run over the top of them if we are consistent enough like we were last week and we'll beat them by at least six goals. Okay, so for that to happen, we've already gone through key matchups, but I mentioned three players. Brody Smith, mm-hmm. David McKay, Rory Atkins. Mm-hmm. Three players that have a tendency to go missing. I think it's unfair. When, on when I'm talking. Yeah, well, <laughs> take Smithers' name out of your mouth, mate. No, no, no. Smithers can go missing. Smithers can go missing. Nah, disagree. Uh, and... Those three players need to continue, and particularly Rory Atkins, particularly yeah. Rory Atkins, needs to keep himself in the contest, in the game, if things are getting hot in in that area of the ground. He cannot, we can't afford for Rory Atkins to start running lanes on the outer wing while the play's over here. I agree, but we also know what we're going to get from Rat. If we're not up, he won't be playing that well. So, Well, why pick him then? Well, I don't know. Talk to the selectors about okay. that. But I think that saying that Brody Smith isn't or goes missing in games when the going gets tough oh, is probably incorrect. No, I think that Brody not. Smith turns a bit more defensive when things get a bit tough. Yes, well, that's and that's a fair that's a fair call. That's not going missing. It's, no, no, no. But I, all he's right. on the back foot a bit more, and and that's a fair. And call. he's not allowed to get off. So the chain. yeah, so we don't get as much value from Brody. We don't yeah. get what he's primarily in the team for, hmm. which is. Breaking the lines, yep. meters gained, etc. We and and you're right. If he's made to be accountable, yeah. Um, then, but but 
you know, because I'm not I'm not bagging Brody as such, but what I'm saying is if we don't get his output in terms of transition, yep. the cupboard starts getting a little bit bare. Yeah, but I think, and again, I know the opposition that we had last week, but I think Brody last week got a bit of confidence back. Oh, no doubt. And I think that we'll find Loved that, his game. Yeah, and I think we'll find that even if the going does get a little bit tough, yes, he might not be as prolific, but he'll still do those damaging things that we know he can do. Mm-hmm. Running, kicking long, all that sort of stuff. And I also think, and we haven't really talked about this too much, but the fact that Miller is out poses a bit of a question as well. He obviously gives us a bit of a chop out in the midfield, but his defensive run, so him coming out of um, the defensive 50, has been really pivotal for us in his decision-making. Rory Laird needs to step up. Yeah, in his definitely. Absence, in his absence, he needs to step up. And Rory, good player, love him, all that. But has been a little bit, not missing, but not as effective at the start of the year. And I think that it's got something to do with actually Miller being in the team for Maybe. one, because it's you know it's not all him. Yeah. Um. And I think that without Miller in that back line, and you know McKay stepped up as well, but without Miller in that back line, Laddie really needs to have a good game this week. Yeah, he does. You're right. Yeah. Um. And so does Jake Kelly. I thought he was all right last week, to be honest. Well, uh, he was. He was Jake Kelly. No, he was. He wasn't Jake Kelly because Jake Kelly turns the ball over and makes silly mistakes whereas last week I thought he was solid and that's all I need from him I'm not expecting him to be more than what he is if he holds down his player and he doesn't turn the ball over and he doesn't bite off more than he can chew he's done his job alright cool so you nearly convinced me but I'm going to stick with my tip Uh, I'm going Saints by put your money three to four goals put your money where your mouth is then well whoever whoever's right buys a beer for next week and doesn't buy green can so it actually shows up well don't be cheap and buy your own next time (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so what are you saying? Uh, we win by at least six. At least six? At least. I wouldn't be surprised if we win by more, to be honest. Okay. Well, look, thanks very much. I hope you're uh, looking forward to the big game this afternoon. Uh, we certainly are. It's a pivotal one for the Crows to get back into the hunt for the uh, 2019 season. So uh, thanks very much for joining us, and we will see you on Sunday night for the Rap Show. In the meantime, see you later.